Welcome to MLB The Show 22 feature premieres. In each feature premiere, we will take a look at what's new and updated in MLB The Show 22. Tune in each Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific for a new episode. You can also watch it on Twitch and YouTube. Let's get into this week's episode. Today, we are going to talk about March to October and franchise mode. We have Clayton and Tim in the studio to talk about some of the awesome new features in March to October and show off some of the new franchise updates in MLB The Show 22. But before we do, fellas, introduce yourself. Clayton, uh, who are you? How long have you worked on the team? And tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Ramon. Happy to be back. I'm going on year, it's tough to talk about, I think year 18 now. 
Uh, last year I was designer on uh, MTL franchise. This year I'm wearing the dual hat of product owner and designer, and uh, we're, we're excited to share what we have here. Awesome! Glad to have you back, Clayton. We have a new face, fresh to the team. Tim Barnes, introduce yourself. Tell us where you came from, why you're here, and what you're excited about. Yeah, Ramon, uh, my name's Tim Barnes. Like you said, I'm the rookie on the team here. Um, I'm a huge franchise fan, lucky to be here. Um, I was a community member before this. I had an experience with the team going back 10 years and excited to show you what we've done this year in franchise and MTO. Absolutely, we're very excited to Tim to be here. We went and got Tim because we knew he was the right man to take franchise into the future. So happy to have you here. So let's take a deep dive and let's talk about franchise mode. How long have you been here now, Tim? I've been here for six months, actually. Six months. Y'all have done a lot of work this past year and just in the short six months that you've been here. Uh, you guys have been hard at work putting into some great changes into player and trade metric in franchise mode. Let's talk about it. So we wanted to touch on player and trade metric to start off because there was a little bit of misconception that trade metric is trade logic. So let's be clear, trade metric is not trade logic at all. What the metrics are, are a foundation for evaluating players. Um, it takes into account age, it takes into account potential, uh, performance is a big component. And for the trade metric itself, it takes into account contract values. Uh, we weren't satisfied with the old foundation and it didn't make sense to tackle logic systems that would rely on a foundation that we weren't confident in. So the other thing I want to touch on is I'm also going to touch on the 30 year sims. I know this is a big talking point in the communities and I want to clarify that too. Uh, 30 year sims were not about studying trade logic. Uh, they were about looking at how age relates to potential, which relates to rank in our game how war relates to rank in our game, how AAV relates to war in our game. And what that allowed us to do is come up with these metrics for evaluating players and projecting their value out into the future. So across team control years, across contract years. And this really gives us a foundation that we're excited about. And you weren't satisfied with the old foundation, right? Uh, we definitely weren't. We loved what we did, but we also thought there were some improvements we could make. We wanted to make um, a little bit less drastic how performance affected uh, trade metric and player metrics. So we shifted to a three-year weighted war versus essentially looking at the most recent season for war. And then uh, we made some additional formula improvements for the AAA values for position players because we felt that they were a little off when it came to the higher level guys in AAA. So Clayton, tell us more about this new foundation and what all of this work now allows you to do moving forward. Okay, so the importance to this is it gives us a foundation that we're very confident in and that essentially lets us now attack the core logic system, something we've wanted to do for a little bit now, but what this really do is it unlocks a great base for us to do this and be confident moving forward. Can we explain what war is and what AAV is, Tim? War is wins above replacement, so we use zero as our baseline. Anything above that is above replacement level, anything below that is below replacement level. Fantastic. So what's AAV? AAV is average annual value. So on a contract, you'll see sometimes terms, long-term deals. So that may be for $250 million over 10 years. If you break that down, it's $25 million per year. So War was in the game last year, and we, we used War in previous games for some of the logic system, what's the big change moving forward for MLB The Show 22? Yeah, so AAV and, and WAR were both components of, of player and trade metrics, but last year there was only we were only looking at the most recent season when it came to, to WAR, and now we're looking at a three-year weighted WAR, so uh, the most recent season and the two before that are also taken into account, so consistency will be rewarded when it comes to performance. Fantastic. This, this sounds all great. In MLB The Show 22, now let's take some time to talk about trade logic. So what we're excited about, we have this new foundation in place, even a second revision. Essentially, we have player and trade metric 2.0. So this now allows us to refine trade logic to reflect current trends, and Tim was highly involved with these new logic improvements. So when we started looking at this, we wanted to make sure we were doing it the right way, and we wanted to make sure that it started in a nice, strong base. We took a look at our trade block logic and we looked to refine it. 
The first thing that we did was we made sure we refined it with rebuilding teams no longer placing players on the trade block that had long-term team control. Playoff push teams are more likely to add prospects. And I looked back in the past as a Yankee fan to when Chapman was traded from the Yankees for Glaber Torres, a big prospect that was brought in in that trade. Relief pitchers and closers will now be added to the trade block for teams out of contention. And again, as a Yankee fan, you saw Andrew Miller traded and brought back Clint Frazier. And teams will look to trade from positional strengths. So if they have a strength in one area, they're more likely to add a player on that trade block from there. So on top of the current trend improvements we've made, teams will value top players now and they'll place a premium on them in trade negotiations. On the flip side of that, relief pitchers and closers will have less value when it comes to trades. We heard the feedback. We saw things. We, we can see what happened with some of our trade logic where you saw those big name players were, be, were being traded for a bag of chips. We changed that. We, we reflected what we saw, what the community saw, and we made adjustments. And as Clayton had just said, we placed a premium on those top players. Just like real baseball teams do, every team has that star player. And our logic now will reflect that. And that logic will dictate how much of a premium will be added to each of those players. And it changes. It's something that's under the hood, and you'll see that a top player, like a Soto, will have more of a premium added to his trade, and he'll bring back a larger package than a player that's less than him. Let's dive into that. Remember, the there was a meme, unfortunately, trending. Juan Soto's getting traded for a bag of chips. Are you saying that doesn't happen anymore? Now, if you want Juan Soto, and we'll show you here, Juan Soto now, a trade for Juan Soto is going to take the farm. And on this right here, if you look at our screen, this was in year two of a sim that we just recently did. And you can see that Juan Soto was traded, but the Yankees had to give up two of the top five prospects in the game to get him. And that, that was a huge thing, and I'm really happy to see this in the game. So when we had this sim in studio, we were excited. We were like fist bumping. We were really excited about this. So this is a huge improvement. Okay, well, Tim's a Yankees fan, so he is really excited. The rest of us, maybe not quite to that <laughs> level, but we're very happy about the improvements to the trade logic. All right, one last note on trade logic is that players will no longer be traded immediately after signing in the offseason. This is something that we've, we'd seen and we weren't happy with, and we knocked that out as well. All right, so to button up before we move on, Trade Logic has seen some pretty drastic improvements. You mentioned rebuilding clubs will now look to trade expiring deals and not add players that have multi years of team control, right? That was a big sore point. You also mentioned that playoff push teams are now more likely to add prospects to the trade block for that one piece they may need, which is a reflection of current trends as well, right? And then one of the other things you mentioned that now you'll see relief pitchers and closers added to the trade block for teams out of contention. We saw a lot of relief pitchers getting traded last year as we were rolling up to the playoffs, right? So this is all great things. Anything that we missed on this recap for Trade Logic? The one thing that we're really happy that we're seeing occur in all of our sims is that teams that are in a playoff hunt are willing to give up a little extra to get that piece they need for the final playoff push. Really good stuff in terms of franchise changes, trade logic, was, which was built on another year of improvements for the player and the trade metric system. Now let's talk about budgets, contracts, and two-way player improvements, Clayton. So budget improvements, team budget is now based on the 40-man roster. Uh, previously, it was, it was based on the entire organization, so it's, it's more realistic now that it's based on the 40-man roster. We have an accurate CBT, which is the com competitive balance tax. We've also updated team market sizes to reflect the current trend. So what you'll see now is the difference between a 40-man budget versus complete organizational budget, which was in there year pa years past, and Tim will touch on that. So this was a, a two-year project so far. Uh, last year, budget improvements were starting, and we continue to do this. And we know we have more work to do, and we're going to continue to work at that. Um, as you can see in these side-by-side -side screens, our old logic, using the Red Sox, uh, they had $10 million of available budget. After our new logic was in place by using only the 40-man rosters, you can see that this team now has $16 million of available space. So not only did we touch on that, we also touched on so many other things with the budgets. We updated the market sizes, so under the hood, uh, each team has their updated market sizes. 
we've really improved on a lot of things with the budget that's really reflective in our game. And while we're talking about the Red Sox and the Red Sox budget, some of you might have seen our new legend reveal earlier this week. Let's take a look at the man Kevin Euclid and that one of a kind Ben stand. Kevin Euclid will hit next. Three, two now. Oh, now this one's blasted deep to left. Way back there, on its way and out of here. A two-run shot, and just like that, they're out front. It's 2-0. That one just sounded different. And might have been the loudest moment yet. Man, my ears are ringing. I can feel that swing from the boot. Take another look as StatCast tells us that ball took off at 110 miles an hour. And plenty of distance as well. I mean, that was an impressive home run, but he squared it up and knew it was gone. So what you're basically telling us, Clayton, is now that our player payroll, we're just looking at the 40-man roster, which is how it's done in real life. Exactly, yeah. So every team will now have more budget space because instead of taking into account the entire organization and all 92, 93 players in our game, it'll, it'll be based like it is in real life, the 40-man roster. And what does that change in free agency, Tim? We've ran so many sims, and what we're seeing now is really, really awesome results because now, 20 years in the future, you are not seeing free agents sitting in the free agent pool. They're being signed. Teams are having available space. And our budget's dynamic because it's based on wins and losses and performance in the season. So we're really happy with the results. We're really happy with what's going on. Uh, we're hoping to continue making improvements. So we're going to keep it moving. We've talked about updates to the player and trade metric, a lot of changes to trade logic, also a lot of changes to the team budget, which is now based off of the 40-man roster, which is now accurate. We've also updated the team market sizes to reflect the current MLB. But that's not all the work y'all have done. Y'all also have done some work with contract improvements. So the budget is a natural lead into the contract improvements. So, so max contract term has now been expanded to 15 years. Max AAV, average annual value that we touched on earlier, has been increased to 35 million. Uh, player contract demands have been adjusted be essentially because we've, we've made improvements to the player metric. It's now based on a three-year weighted war performance, consistent performance will be rewarded, and that's reflected in the con contract demands of the players. And we've also boosted the overall relief pitcher contract values. So on the screen here, you'll see some examples of some of the changes we made in contract improvements, and I'll let Tim, who is highly involved in this, touch on it. So as you can see on the screens here, uh, these are two side-by-side -side comparisons, uh, one with a player Freddie Freeman here with a contract of a one-year deal at 35 million a year another one with this term at 15 years now beyond that beyond that one of the things that I'm really excited about again is our player contract demands and one of the reasons I'm excited about that is because there's some confusion about why contracts are different on every sim and that's really exciting because it takes performance into account and so if a player has a poor performing season his contract demands and his contract is obviously going to be less than it would be if he had a really strong year running up into his free agency. So I think that's realistic. It represents what's happening in real baseball. And I think by using that three-year weighted war, as Clayton had mentioned earlier, really shows that and reflects it because that in the past, you would see one year influence that contract way too much. Now with that three-year weighted war, I think we're hitting a sweet spot. This is fantastic. Have you done anything for relief pitcher contract values? We have. Actually, one of the things that I had as an issue as a community member was that I thought relief pitchers and closers uh, were not paid accurately. We've made some adjustments to that this year. Uh, and you're going to see relief pitchers, as long as their performance is up to par, are going to get paid more in the offseason. But wait, there's more. Let's talk about two-way player improvements. What's been done there? Well, since we have this guy on the cover that we should respect his talents. We wanted to make sure that we were making all possible improvements to the two-way player. Uh, two-way players will now be able to DH every day they don't pitch. Two-way players will now recover pitching stamina while they DH. 
And pitchers that have a secondary position can become a two-way player if they are the best option at DH. That's fantastic. What's also to remember here is that this is for season mode based logics. This does not carry over to Diamond Dynasty. In Diamond Dynasty, Shohei Otani, it's either a pitcher card or a hitter card. You can't use both. But in season-based modes, you can now use Shohei Otani the exact same way the Angels did, and you don't have to worry about stamina being this issue, so his stats are so low. Yeah, if you notice on the screens here, the side-by-side -side comparison, in the past, Otani, his pitching stats, as well as his hitting stats, would be affected by that stamina. That no longer is occurring. So if you look at his stats here, another MVP-type season that he's having. Which is fantastic. What's also, you know, we're just going to take a moment here. Shohei Otani is really a generational talent and athlete, so much so that it literally took three development cycles to be able to get the logic right in game so you could use him the same way he's used in real life. And that's just a testament to the type of player he is. All right, moving on. Let's talk about how things have changed in the offseason, free agency, and roster logic in general. So we were finding that too many players were signing due the, during the exclusive signing period. Uh, we made some logic changes there so that you'll see more realistic number of players signing during that period. And then um, to be more realistic, uh, in the past, our game would have all these free agents, and I guess it was in the past in real life too, but you'd see all these free agents signing big deals off the hop as soon as free agency opened. That's not really the case anymore. Sometimes these, th these things drag out further into the off season. And so our game is going to re reflect that. You'll see some of the bigger name players signing later in the off season. Clayton, that's great to hear. Tim, you're going to tell us a little bit more about off-season free agency improvements, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that we did was we went back for the last five years and we did a little research about what's occurring in real MLB. And one of the things that our game didn't refl reflect accurately was exclusive negotiations. Most players, when they hit that free agency period, they don't sign. They don't sign right away. They want to hit that market and we were seeing way too many players. So we changed the logic so that we see more players that hit free agency. So here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison from our old logic versus our new logic. And that old logic, that is not an inclusive list. That list continued on. That's how many players were signing in the exclusive period. If you look at our new logic, you can see now only a few players signed the exclusive period. And then again, Flipping over here on the page to our off-season free agency improvements where our players would sign throughout the off-season. If you look from December 1st with our old logic versus December 1st new logic, you're going to see that there's a lot more high-rated players that are still on the board. What had happened in the past, our players would sign the first 30 days. Now as we continue on through January into February, you're seeing that there's still players that are available that are the top free agents. And that's reflective of real MLB on a traditional year. This year's a little different, obviously. With that being said, I know the concern and the worry would be, well, does that mean that these guys aren't going to sign? They always are going to sign. Sometimes if they hold on too long, like in real baseball, they may have a reduced contract, but they will sign. Tim and Clayton, this is amazing news. Another thing that's been improved in franchise mode. Now let's jump into roster logic. Has any work been done there in the roster logic category? Talking about foundational changes in the player metric and trade metric, we've been able to incorporate the player metric into arbitration and renewable decisions. Other logic changes are the CPU tendencies to keep players that have value to the organization. One of the things our fans have always asked for is they wanted to have a dynamic offseason. They wanted to have dynamic roster logic. And what we're seeing now, that we've changed it. it. It no longer is based just on potential or overall. It's based on player metric. And we're seeing some really good results with teams that are either non-tendering players in the offseason or holding on to them. Uh, I just had an example earlier today where we had a player, Glaber Torres again, going back to him, who's had a really down year, a couple down years actually. And the Yankees made a midseason trade for a second baseman. In the offseason, his player rating was so far down because of his player metric, the Yankees non-tendered him because his contract value was no longer equitable to what his perceived value for the team was. Really happy, really awesome results that we're seeing here. And this is why doing that foundational work with the player metric and the trade metric starting last year and working on it again this year is so valuable and needed to be done before you guys could make all of these improvements, correct? 
That's exactly right, Ramon. I mean, another addition here that I can jump into is that I mean, the player metric is now used to help you know, protect value players when it comes to the Rule 5 draft. So in the past, you know, some guys would slip through that maybe you shouldn't see on the, on the Rule 5 draft. And, and with the player metric and with the changes we've made, you know, it's very rare that you'll see someone of significant value be in the Rule 5 draft. Have there been any logic improvements to the 40-man roster, Tim? Yeah, actually, we've, we've addressed 40-man roster construction quite a bit um, this cycle. One of the things that we looked into was what players should be on that 40-man roster. And again, referring back to what we've done with the player metric, player metric is the foundational piece in evaluating all the roster decisions that we're making. So in the past, again, it was based purely on, on potential, on overall. That no longer is the case. So we also have, again, back to the player metric, we have that performance piece that's in there. That's the things that fans have been clamoring for. You will see that happen. I guess the important thing to really remember here is that the metrics are forward looking. You know, they take into account your potential. They take into account your performance. Your performance, again, will affect the outlook for players. Just like real life, if somebody has a down season, well, their future outlook is going to be downgraded as well. So these metrics help with uh, obviously the roster composition logic and all these other uh, core logic systems. What about potentials and age, Clayton? So Tim and I are, are a stickler for uh, prospects, for accuracy of p potentials, and and we uh, we definitely took a close look at the top 100 prospects, probably the top 150 at least. Uh, we combed through their potentials, make sure their age was also correct, and and it was important to us to have these be at least in the ballpark of everyone's opinion. Obviously, you know all these all these opinions are subjective, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll find that you guys should find that they'll be very accurate and we heard the community we really looked through those rosters and made sure the ages are correct in our prospects and so we addressed that also i think you're going to be very satisfied for the out of the box rosters there are no longer any developers or any creative players on the rosters we will have real players from a ball all the way up to triple a and with that being said it is balanced now for an authentic franchise experience so we're getting close to the end talking about franchise moves. Is there anything that we missed? Uh, Tim's going to be really excited about these ones. Here we go. This I am really excited about. These are community requests. And one of the things I did when I got here was I really wanted to address some of those. Um, when we talked to people here about the pitcher stamina in the postseason, one of the things that was a concern was our pitchers were not recovering stamina fast enough in the postseason and we couldn't have four-man rotations or even have that three-man's ace pitch in that uh, deciding game. We've addressed that. Now the aces that are capable of it will pitch on short rest. You'll see four-man rotations in the postseason. Really exciting there. Our transaction log. With our transaction log, it was always a concern of mine, and I know other people. If you were in the offseason, you could never look back and see what trades occurred early in the season. We've expanded our transaction log by four times. So our transaction log, trades will be able to be viewed all the way in the postseason from things that happened early in April. And the last little bit, and I think some people in the community have already seen this during the tech test, one of the things that we wanted to see, injury sliders for simulation and in-game. So you can have two separate sliders. Some people want to adjust their sliders for simulation to be a little higher during simulation of the games and others want to have them a little bit tighter during in-game. Two separate sliders now for injuries. I think they're great ads. There is so much that we've already discussed. Contract improvements, two-way player improvements. We've talked about off-season and free agency, roster logic improvements, fran other franchise changes, and again, to go back, the player and the trade metric is the foundation that you guys started last year to be able to do all of these other groundbreaking foundational changes. Because the foundation wasn't right, can't build a mansion in mud, right? That is correct. So, again, trade metric is not trade logic. What it is, is this foundational piece that lets us evaluate these players. We love this new metric, that and the player metric. And what it's allowed us to do is attack these core logic systems. Those are all great changes coming to Franchise Mode and MLB The Show 22. Now let's dive into March to October. But before we talk about all of the amazing additions this year, let's give our new fans a very brief overview of what March to October is as a game mode. 
So March to October, you're going to jump in and out of the most important moments throughout a season, uh, essentially the key moments. Um, you'll play those moments and then depending on if you win or lose, momentum will be either acquired or lost, which will affect the games that you sim. Um, there's a dynamic narrative to it. And so essentially think of it as a fast paced franchise mode. There it is. There have been a lot of additions this year, including the ability to take your March to October across multiple years. Can you tell us a little bit about that, Clayton Tim? We're excited about this almost as much as we're excited about the franchise changes. Maybe more. Depends on the person. But multi-season MTO is here. So what we have now is a fast-paced, high-level team building experience. Right. So it's no longer really just a win-now mode, correct? Yeah, it was important to us that, that everyone, if you, all the different styles you want to play, all the different organizational strategies, if you want to rebuild, you can rebuild. If you're a mid-level team that wants to retool, you can do that as well. If you're a contender that needs that last piece, you have that availability as well. Or you can be a favorite who's still in the win-now mode. That sounds incredible. All right, let's turn on the dev kit and jump into March to October in MLB The Show 22. Here we go. So in previous versions of MTO, at this point, you could continue in franchise. That's still available to you. But the other option was to restart, but now you can advance to the MTO offseason. And we're advancing to the offseason. So I'm just going to kind of read through the tutorial. It's going to help explain what's going on, and then we'll uh, kind of ad lib as we go. So this is the free agency big board. It's the central hub for the March to October offseason. In the top left corner, there's budget involved now. So this is your offseason budget. Uh, it's available for signing free agents over this 12-week period. You may not exceed this budget, so like it says, use it wisely. Adding a free agent to your big board is the best way to incre increase their interest in signing with your team. As you can see here, the priority, higher priority you make a free agent on the big board, the more their interest level will gain per week. So think of it as you're whining and dying these free agents. If one free agent is more important than the other, you should probably have them as a higher priority as they'll gain more interest week to week. Just like as you saw in the trade hub in March to October, or as, as you have seen in the trade hub in March to October, we also have positional and team needs. Uh, free agents who fit these needs will express additional interest in signing with your team. So here we go, Tim. Who should we add to well, the big board? Well, as we get ready here to add a player, one of the things that I want to express is how excited I am about this because I think this is completely innovative. It's a, a whole new way to look at free agency, and I don't think any game captures that. So as we get going here, um, why don't we add a player? And before we do that, let's let's take a look at the positional and team needs because this is a focus of March October for the off season. Our interest accrual system, which we'll go over in a little bit here, plays in part with how we select our positional and team needs. So if we look at this and we're looking at the Blue Jays team, we're gonna look at some weaknesses that this team has. So Clayton, who do you think right now we need to select? What do you think is our positional? Needed. Based on rankings, we'd have to go with second base, third base, and I guess relief pitching. So we selected up to three positional needs, and this is going to help us as well when we start to add players to our big board. This will help us gain interest as well as you're going to see later on that it helps us have a targeted free agent list based on those team need, positional needs. So. Positional needs that you select, so players that match these positional needs, they'll gain interest weekly even if they're not on your big board. So keep that in mind. I love this part. I'm going to be completely honest. I think this is so cool. If you look at our, our brand new team needs page here, we took what we had in the end season for our trade hub and the team needs there. And Clayton and I, when we started our design with this, we were looking at it and the ideas that we had, we couldn't fit all the ideas on nine panes we had to go bigger we had to go better so we started looking at what are real gms out there looking for what are, what are the players that they're looking for so as you can see we have some new things on this for our team needs we have finesse pitcher we have power pitcher we have ground ball pitcher and we have an on base machine so what these do here when we're looking at this our ground ball pitcher they're a pitcher that limits home runs they keep the ball in play and they also either have a sinker or a two-seamer. So also we have power pitcher. Now a power pitcher, a lot of teams, and I keep always going back to my Yankees, but Yankees built their team on power pitching bullpen arms. 
And one of the things we want to look for here is we want power pitchers. These are our high strikeout guys. These are our guys with high octane fastballs. You select them, our list will be curated for that, and we'll also have interest accrual for those players. We also have finesse pitchers. When you're looking for a finesse pitcher, what is the what's happening in the back end? What type of pitchers are you looking for? So finesse pitchers are not necessarily guys that are soft tossers. These are guys that are on the plate. So we're looking for guys that are pitching to the strike zone. that are looking for balls in play. They're not looking to strike everyone out. So we talked about hitting. You, not just left and right handed. You can actually look for on base machine contact or power, right? That's correct. And the good thing here with on base machine. This is, and all of these actually, are not only based on attributes, these are also based on stats that are generated in-game. So with an on-base machine, what we're looking for here are guys that get on base with a high clip. And that's generated, and that can change. These lists can be changed each, each season based on the, the simulated stats and their attributes. All right, so let's select a few and see what pops up. What do you think, Tim? We need second base, third base, relief pitching. What do you want to add as team needs? Hey, it, it's brand new baseball. This is the new generation. Let's go on base machine. I love that. I like my on base guys. We're playing in Toronto. We'll target a ground ball pitcher. Why not? So moving back to the big board, if you want to add a free agent to your big board, you'll click in here. Now, free agents available for this offseason can be sorted into multiple lists. We have a top 100 free agent list that's based on player metric, of course. We also have the recommended free agents that match your positional and team needs. And then we have a free agent rumor list that will display players that are being approached by other teams. They've been already offered a contract of some sort, but since it's week one, nothing's available on the free agent rumor list at this point. So who would you like to select, Tim? So the way I like to look at it, I like to go to my recommended list start off with so this is a, a list that's generated based on our positional and team needs that we selected so obviously this list is going to be the players that would fit those those things that we asked for Freddie Freddie all right Freddie's a free agent still out there let's add Freddie so we have Freddie added to our big board so after you target a player you're gonna reach out to his agent as you see here you're contacting Freddie Friedman's agent then after you advance a week, their interest level will be found right where you see it. It says contacting agent. So leaving players on your big board for multiple weeks is the best way to increase their odds of signing with your team. Here you can find the amount of interest the player will gain per week as your number one priority. So Freddie Freeman here is getting 8% interest per week. Now the goal of adding these players to your big board and the interest accrual is that you're looking to gain as much interest from that player to sign with your team as possible. So each week, as it shows here on the big board, your player is going to gain 8% of additional interest. And you can see right now, we don't know what his interest is in signing with our team. And the reason being is we're reaching out to his agent. We want to get some feedback from him and that'll unlock after a week of simming. So the 8% interest per week, there's a base uh, interest accrual for the first slot, for the number two priority, for the number three priority. Uh, and in addition to that, you have the positional and team needs. So you have your base interest accrual, base interest per, per priority. And then on top of that, you have your positional and team needs that will add to that base interest. And that comes out to how much interest you'll gain per week. So if you need a first baseman and you're targeting a first baseman, you're going to have a higher percentage chance of getting higher interest because of your team needs and that you're prioritizing him in that first slot. Exactly. So for Freeman, you know, he's a left-handed batter. He's a first baseman. You know, if, if you chose first base and you chose left-handed batter, there's more interest that would be accrued per week. Nice. So what happens for starting pitching? How does that work out? Well, it's going to work out the same way. So right now, let's, uh, let's go back into our list. So we're, we're going to go through this menu here option. Clayton add another player. Ooh. Okay, we're going to add it to our second priority. So we're going to recommend a list here, and we wanted a relief pitcher. So let's look through our relief pitchers here and see if we have anyone pop up. So we have Edwin, we have Taylor Rogers at the top of the list here. Let's we go for Taylor. Him. I want to go big. With Taylor. So here's an example of if you add more players to the big board, you'll see the interest in your first priority because you're spreading out your interest. You're winding and dining more players now, right? So Freddie Freeman's interest went from 8% to 7%, and you can see Taylor Rogers' initial interest level being 5%. 
And so if we decide to, we don't have to put a third priority to keep the interest level up for the first two priorities, correct? Is that how it works? Exactly. If you want to focus on one guy and gain as much interest as, as possible, you can just have one guy on your big board, you know? If you want to target three guys, you can target three. In this case, we have two. If we added a third priority, the interest level for Freeman and Rogers, what they would accrue per week, would drop again. Okay, so what happens next? Well, let's jump ahead a week and let's see where we where we stand with Freeman and Rogers after their agents get back to us. We can go up here and we'll advance a week. So when you choose this, you can advance the calendar or you can skip the rest of the off season. We're just going to jump back into the calendar here. So once you're back in here, we call this the landing pad. You can advance one day at a time or you can sim the whole week if you want to get back to the big board. The big board will appear weekly. So we're going to advance one day at a time. Oh, right. what's happening here, Clayton? Right off the hop, we have a last chance opportunity. So last chance opportunities are our way of not just having guys disappear off your big board. We want to at least give you a shot at signing them before we pull them off the big board. So you can see here his, his interest in signing with you is only 35%. It's not ideal, but we wanted to give you at least one last shot before you got removed from your big board. Essentially what's happening is he, he's got an offer from another team, he's close to signing with them, and he's coming back to you and, and essentially giving you one last shot at giving them a contract offer. So, do we want to say not interested or do we want to offer a contract? We're going for it. Let's yeah. go get him. So what's going on in this new screen? So this is a new contract offer screen for MTO. Um, you can see here that you can adjust the term and yearly salary. And as you do that, you're going to see that the Taylor Rogers interest in signing with you is going to go up and down so we're going to move we're offering him six years now instead of five seven years instead of five and his interest level keeps raising the same thing will happen when you're when you're changing the contract value so are we going to go for it we're Let's going to go max out it. our offer for Rogers Let's all right max it out we're going to go seven years and we're going to bump it all the way up 14.08 per year took it over 50% so we have a greater chance to sign him than Risky. 35% before yeah so here we go we're gonna offer it oh what is this a little surprise for you feature. Ramon yeah who did he sign with oh, oh we, we got, got him 52% chance but Rogers going to Canada of course he is <laughs> <laughs> love those Canadians. So explain this feature a little bit more, Clayton. I'm assuming had he not signed with the Blue Jays, he would be in a different uniform. Well, yeah, there's a little wrinkle to it. Um, it's funny, in, in the, a lot of the testing we did, when people saw the uh, reveal happening, they assumed 100% that they had signed this player, and then, you know, it would flash on and they had signed with a different team. And their reaction instantly was to be upset, almost throw their controller. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out, you know, ask them more about it. They actually love the fact they made it exciting, you know, so we're definitely happy with it. So with this, with the reveal that we have, this will only occur for our top 25 free agents. Ah, and that changes every year. Every year. Actually, every sim. Oh, every sim. Okay, so what are we looking at next? We're going back to the landing pad. We're going to move right on all the way to week two. We're going to sim day by day because, as you see on the top right, breaking news can happen. So... Up here we have Aaron Nola signed with the Padres, a big deal. And we can scroll down to see other signings that occurred as well. Chad Green over to the Marlins. So being able to sim day by day and having this breaking news there, it lets you uh, not miss out on any big signings throughout the league. So we'll keep moving ahead and then we're going to end up back on the big board. So Rogers, we know, we already signed him. He won't be on the big board, but Freddie Freeman, first baseman who we're after, still there. So you can notice on this, and our off-season budget, it's been decreased, and that's because we just made a big signing. But if you look, Freddie Freeman is asking for $13.5 million a year, but he's still on the big board. And the reason for that is we can offer him a reduced contract. He may be asking for $13.5 million, but we can still offer up to 12.78. Of course, offering him that reduced contract is going to lower his interest level in signing with you, but you can still do it. So we signed a pitcher. We only have $12.7 million left. Freddie's looking for 13 and a half. What's going on here? Why is he still on our board? He's still on our board because the way Freddie's looking at it, we may be able to offer him a slightly reduced contract. And right now we're within that range where he's willing to accept it if all things line up. 
So the 33% interest, what's going on here, Clayton? Okay, so what that's telling me, he gained 8% that first week. So his initial interest level in signing with the Blue Jays was 25%. Now the initial signing level is based on a bunch of different factors. It's based on age. It's based on how the Blue Jays performed. It's based on positional needs of the Blue Jays. It's based on some morale components. There's a lot that goes into that base initial interest level. So he had 25%. Initial interest level, you gained 8%. He's up to 33% for week two. Right. And, you know, the Blue Jays have this really talented guy playing first base right now. Well, I think you're probably right, Ramon. I think it's a mistake to go after Freeman. Vladdy is the man. Vladdy's the daddy. So we're going to remove Freeman from the board here. So again, he'll go in here. You can see the offer contract is locked. You have to be 50% interest level to offer a contract unless it's a last chance opportunity which you saw earlier additionally you can move priorities you could move if you had additional guys on the board you could move freddie to the third priority second priority and obviously right now we're going to remove him from the targeted list or you could replace them but we'll remove them right now so freeman's gone we're going to take a look back at our positional needs where should we go next guys second base third base yeah let's go for our second baseman Second base and third base. We're going to jump in. You can see here that obviously Trey Turner, he wants $35 million a year. He's outside of our budget. Aaron Judge as well. But we're going to go to the recommended list. And we'll take a quick look at the rumor list here. So as you can see, we've simmed a week. And it's starting to show you you know, players that have interest and contract offers from other teams. The Yankees are bleeding. Look at all these guys going. We like to see that, Tim. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. So the recommended list. So we did keep first base on there, so there's going to be some first baseman on here. But you see Freeman, he matches first base, he matches left-handed batter, he matches contact. So those are the kind of guys that are going to get you the highest uh, interest accrual per week if, if they're on your big board. So what happens if we go back and remove first base as a focus? Yeah, you'd lose that check mark there, and he would, uh, if he was on your big board, he would lose a little of, of the interest he would accrue per week. So we'll go through, we're trying to find, oh, so we have Colton Wong at second base. Adam Frazier could be a good one. He's matching He's matching oh, with I all like these Frazier. needs. Let's, add Let's Adam try to Frazier. get Frazier. All right, we're going to add Adam Frazier. He wants $7.1 million a year for five years. Adam Frazier's on the board. Let's focus on him. I want to focus on Frazier. You want to focus? I want to okay. focus. My attention's square right there. All right, so we're going to advance a week. Up here, you can also look at league signings that have occurred. So we can see that... Waka signed with the Dodgers, Nola with the Padres, Green with the Marlins, and Rogers obviously we signed him. We also have access to the depth chart, so you can see that Rogers has been added to your bullpen and he is now your closer. So it's advanced week, we're still gonna continue to do day by day. Breaking news, Trey Turner. Ooh, White Sox, contract. White Sox. Contract. Seven years, $238 million. Man, got paid. All right, so we're back to the big board. Wow. So what just popped up here is what's called a free agent opportunity. Occasionally in an offseason, what you'll find is you'll see that agents will reach out to your team looking to see if you're interested in signing their player. Now, if you look here, Merrifield, his agent is reaching out to see if we're interested in signing him. It's based on team needs and positional needs, and those are the needs that you select. Now, if you don't happen to select a positional need, we auto-generate based on the three lowest player positions. Rankings. In the rankings, correct. So here you can also see that his interest with signing with your team is 59%. So with Whitman Airfield, he's quick, he's fast. Maybe it's something we want to take a look at. So if we go here, you can either add him to your target list, say you're not interested, or you could offer him a contract. Now, Clayton, I'm going to have Clayton, even though I don't want to sign him right now. Clayton, you want to go to the offer contract screen? We'll take a look, see what he wants. So out of the spot here with Merrifield, we have our contract offer screen. But if you look in the upper right hand corner there, we have what's called a guaranteed accept. This is a tool that you can use once per off season. So this is the way if you want to make that big signing, you can do it. But if you do that, you're going to pay, and you're going to pay dearly. The other wrinkle with the guaranteed accept is it has to be 55% interest in signing with your team, not just 50%. Okay. So because it's a guaranteed contract, you're going to have to pay above market value here. So 
Initially, he wanted four years, four point nine million per year. To do that guaranteed contract, it's six years, six million. So you're really gonna overpay both in term and AAV. But if you want to do that, once per off season, you can. Yeah, it might be the last piece you need to make that playoff push. This is true, but. No I mean, way. I'm going to lean against not doing this. I'm still interested in Frazier. No, he's not the one I want. Let's go back. All right, so we're going to back out of here. We're just going to say not interested. Sorry, Whit. Okay, so we're back on the big board. Uh, you can see that Frazier's up to 59%. He gained 10%, so his initial interest when we put him on the big board was 49%. Do we want to do anything else here or advance another week? Let's go another week. Oh, Jose Ramirez, yeah, 268 million. Who else signed? Freddie, uh, man, our boy. Angels, boo. Carlos Rodon with the Reds, and Contreras with the Astros. So we'll move ahead here, going day by day. Edwin Diaz, Tigers, Manea, Red Sox, and Bryant back with the, with the Giants. So Frazier's up another 10%, up to 69%. Uh, what do we do here, fellas? Let's keep getting that interest. I want to keep getting that interest. Our goal is to try to get the interest as close as we can to 100%. So here I'm going to sim the week. We're going to jump past those, those breaking news. You have that option if you want to. We have another free agent opportunity. Rugi, I'm a Rangers fan, so immediately I'm going to say not interested. Sorry. <laughs> I do love... Well, I won't even get into that playoff. But yeah. I and do as a love Yankee my fan, boy, not interested either. So we're moving on from that up to 79%. Ooh, Is it time, guys? Is it time to look at a contract? Yeah, 79. That's, that's, that's cool. All right. Jump in, offer contract. Are we happy with the term and the AAV? Or do we want to try and save a little bit? Let's save a little bit of money. You might be able to get a little extra piece here somewhere. 31 years old. I'm going to bump it down a year. Yeah. Ah. Six, 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 six. 67%. All right. Let's roll the dice. Oh, look at that. Everyone oh, okay. wants to play in Canada. You can't okay. blame them. You can't now blame you see, them. there was no reveal there because he wasn't a he top, wasn't 25. top 25. 25? Free agent. All right, we got a little bit of money left over. Who can we pick up? 6.1 million. Let's just go for it. We're going to jump back in here. Let's go for the highest guy available. Trying in. Free agent rank 25. He's on the board. Oh, All really right. trying to so, post that pitching staff. We have to wait a week to see his interest level. We're in advance. We'll sim this week as well. Jump back into the big board. 53%. We're gonna sign him right away. We're gonna Let's see. Go we're gonna it. see. I'm gonna lowball him. Sorry, Blake, but oh, wow. super low. We kind of have to because wow. if you look there, we didn't have the budget space anyway, so we had to reduce that. Yeah. 5.94. He wants 6.6. .6. He wants four years. We're giving him two. It's a long shot. We'll see what happens. I don't this is think this is gonna work out the same way. Oh, oh my God. Mets. The first rejection of the Canadian team. It's unfortunate. We went for it, boys. It's still a good offseason. Rogers, Frazier. Not too shabby. So what else has been added to March to October this year? We already talked about multiple seasons, all of the new information and things you can do in free agency. What about customization? Anything new there? Yeah, so for this year, we took what we had in franchise mode and we took the customization for the team name, location. We have access to logo vault, access to logo editor, custom uniforms, and stadium select, all for next gen. So we lost out on trying, and what's next in this March to October run? Well, we lost out on Blake, but we're going to advance to the end of the offseason um, just to get to the offseason summary screen for you guys. Ooh, offseason summary screen. So we're going to skip the rest of the offseason here. Yes. Rapid Sim. And here's the offseason summary screen. So we got we added Rodgers, we added Frazier. Uh, it was considered a successful offseason, and it shows the overall rankings. So, 
that kind of wraps it for MTO offseason. And there it is. There's March to October. We want to thank Tim and Clayton for joining us today. Any last words, guys? No, we're just really excited for everyone to get their hands on this, and we hope you have as much fun playing as we do every day. Last words, Clayton and Tim. We're really excited about the MTO offseason experience. I, I mean, Tim and I both like the fact that there's this new risk-reward element. There's strategy to it. You have to manage the budget. You can't target everybody. You know, you have to really select your priorities and really be strategic with how you go about it. So we're excited. We hope you guys love it as much as we do. Awesome episode on the updates to March to October and Franchise Mode coming this year to MLB The Show 22. But the feature premieres don't stop. Next week, we are covering everything Road to the Show and ball player related. And then we'll finish things off on March 31st at 3 p.m. Pacific. We have the Diamond Dynasty live content and esports feature premiere rolling just hours before the game goes live at midnight on April 1st. Miss a feature premiere? Make sure to head over to the Sony San Diego Studio YouTube page to check out all the previous feature premieres covering online co-op, MLB The Show coming to Switch, gameplay updates, commentary, and presentation. Again, thanks to Tim and Clayton for joining us this week. And as always, Carson, Steven, and Colin holding it down behind the scenes. See you all next week. <laughs>